While research on the particles of the atomic dark matter theory holds promise, the true nature of the dark sector may hold even more excitement. Theoretical physicist Sabine Hassenfelder intuitively assumes that the reason we haven't solved the dark matter mystery for such a long time is because the wrong people are working on it. It's not a problem you can solve with particle physics and general relativity, she says. It is a problem for condensed matter physics. That's the physics of gases, fluids, and solids, and so on. The core point is that dark matter characteristics match those of early universe plasma, correlating with observed galaxy distributions and cosmic microwave background temperature variations. Professor Robert Temple leaning towards the same idea, writing that, as regards dark matter, one does not need to invent strange new kinds of matter, since it is plasma in different states, gaseous, liquid, solid, etc., that is in the dark mode and hence invisible to us. This fits perfectly with what we now know about the universe consisting of 99.9% .9 plasma. End of quote. Experimental physicist Ken Shoulders also identified a dark or non-interactive mode in his research with dense plasma clusters, which he termed the black state of exotic vacuum objects. This discovery could be key to solving the mystery of the dark sector or whatever is fooling us into thinking there's dark matter. Much of condensed matter physics involves hands-on experiments to discover new possibilities and unusual states of matter. The condensed matter field also includes creating and studying unique design materials and materials with special properties. The experimental study of dense plasma clusters, such as exotic vacuum objects, also falls within this field. New topological materials also allow experimenters to actually design artificial universes with such unusual properties as, say, two time axes. An example of a designed matter can be a special particle of light that forms a blend of matter and light. In short, the possibilities of condensed matter are limited only by our imagination and the fundamental laws of physics, so the list goes on and becomes even more esoteric. If we understand it and can do it already, then why can it not be done by others? And it seems like the fear is that somebody knows the answers and they are not humans. From the evidence of UFO technologies, it appears they have mastered the creation of advanced design materials. The speculation that these advanced beings might occasionally manifest physically in their advanced spacecraft, along with their vulnerability to harm, could explain why close encounters are rare. The theme of mortality and vulnerability among these enigmatic beings, often depicted as sky gods, is prevalent in world mythology. Interestingly, Declassified X-Files also mention that the occupants of UFO crafts mostly cut the ignition systems deliberately, and the failure is not merely a precautionary measure due to the inadvertent close approach of a vehicle to a craft while it is going about its normal business. Mead Lane's Ethereum ships theory also adds a new dimension to interplanetary travel. Lane suggested that if flying saucer disks are materializations from what he termed the etheric plane, or in our hypothesis, the dark sector plane, it's crucial to remember that all celestial bodies, not just Earth, have dark sectors. These regions interpenetrate with our world and extend beyond them implying that disks labeled as coming from Etheria may originate from the dark sectors of Mars, Venus, or other celestial bodies. Therefore, attributing them solely to certain places like Zeta Reticuli or Sirius can be misleading. Referring to UFOs as spaceships from another planet is accurate only if we consider them as crafts from coexisting worlds within invisible dark sectors. If these crafts are able to travel between planets, this supports the notion of aliens from dark star systems, gods from other planets.
Lane also speculated that the distance between dark sector mirror planets and stars might be much shorter. It's important to realize that just changing things in our part of reality, whether it is matter in the dark sector or our light sector, isn't enough. We also need to understand and use the physics of the physical vacuum that permeates all these layers of matter. A physicist and astrophysicist Alan C. Holt has published intriguing papers for NASA regarding matter manipulation, exploring concepts akin to spacecraft materialization and dematerialization. To enable such manipulation, Holt introduces the concept of space-time harmonics, which connect the physical vacuum with our solid matter reality and serves as the link between them. In his technical memorandum, he outlines how spacecraft materialization at various points in our space-time could function, along with a propulsion system capable of galactic and intergalactic travel without long travel times. This field resonance propulsion concept, as per the document, has been developed using recent research on solar flares, magnetic substorms, black holes, quasars, and UFOs. He states, The potential existence of the space-time harmonics mean that if a craft at a specified space-time point could artificially generate a configuration of electro-hydromagnetic fields which has a resonance with a distant space-time point, a basic imbalance would be created. This imbalance would be out of harmony with the projection laws which create the space-time properties from higher dimensional properties. Forces would be set in motion to re-establish a balance which in this case requires that the craft and its fields to be located at the space-time point where such field configurations are a natural harmonic of that space-time metric. The best analogy in everyday life is that of tuning a radio. The tuning knob in this case is the spacecraft's mechanism for changing the configuration of the magnetic waveform. The radio stations are the various space-time points. For a radio, the signal, which is always there, is manifested through the speakers associated with the radio. For the field resonance system, the speakers exist only at the radio station. Once the spacecraft's magnetic waveform is tuned into a distant space-time point, that waveform is forced to manifest only at that space-time point according to the projection laws. If flight to a nearby location is desired, the magnetic waveform can be continuously retuned, allowing very quick and short space-time transformations. For an observer, it would appear to be a smooth flight in much the same way that we do not see the individual frames of a film." End of quote. His field resonance system looks like this. Its design employs six fixed current loops, forming a fractal toroidal structure, a shape resembling a donut. Magnetic flux line reconnections within this structure generate a vortex at the center, resulting in a phase singularity. A phase singularity resembles a vortex, akin to a small whirlpool in water where the flow is disrupted. Thus, the design revolves around toroidal geometry structures, shaped like a donut and inducing vortex formation. We'll briefly acknowledge the significance of this and revisit it later. Interestingly, the spacecraft he proposed has an outer shape resembling a winged disk. This design bears a striking resemblance to ancient depictions of gods in their sky chariots and some UFO sightings. He suggests that the wings would be used for testing purposes only and could be removed after sufficient testing. Even more intriguingly, he introduces the concept of hyperspace. Quote, For mass and energy to be transported from one space-time point to another without an observable connection implies some form of higher dimensional space transcending space-time as we know it. The existence of a higher dimensional space would open up new space travel possibilities since the connections between space-time points through this hyperspace 
could involve laws much different than those which are so constraining in space-time. End of quote. In other words, if we imagine each point in space-time has a unique geometrical address, so to speak, and has a connection to both gravity and electromagnetic forces, then such tuning of waves would be like opening a portal to this resonant space. It'll be a unique code or target, a specific feature of various space-time points matching its bespoke shape and characteristics, which are reflections of a higher dimensional space. But what would be a physical equivalent for such a hyperspace concept and hydromagnetic interactions? And is there an ether after all? Copy over. Running time jump program. Opening the vortex. Start the countdown. 